the sequence task is an extremely common task that you'll use within your behavior tree, so I wanted to go in depth into how this task works. For this video, I'm using the sequence scene from the behavior designer tutorials uh, folder, which you can download through a link in the description of this video. Now, this is a basic behavior tree, but it'll demonstrate well what the sequence task does. The sequence task is a composite task, which basically means that it's a parent task that can have multiple children, and it will run the task from left to right. As soon as one of the child tasks returns failure, the sequence task is going to stop executing. So in this case, this wait is an action task that will wait for one second and then return a status of success. Because this wait task never returns a status of failure, I do not expect the sequence task to bail out early on the tasks just because all the tasks will return success, so all the tasks should run. Let's hit play and see what it does. So it did return success, or all the children returned success. So then the sequence task just ran every single child and then returned success as well. Let's change this up a bit by adding a decorator called return failure. And what return failure does is it basically just changes the task status from success to failure. It will actually change the task status from failure to failure as well, but that will already be failure, so it doesn't make much sense. So now what I expect to happen is this first wait task will play, and then as soon as this next wait task, this wait will return success, but because return failure will change the status from success to failure, I expect sequence to stop playing as well. So let's go ahead and hit play, and first status, or the first task returns success, and then this next task returned success as well, but return failure did change the status, and so then the sequence stopped playing the task because it had a status code of, or it had a failure status, and so this third wait task never actually played. Now you can join multiple, or you can put multiple sequence tasks in a hierarchy, and in this case it's not gonna change the outcome at all because this wait task Will still not will still not be ever get to it because of this return status of failure. If we if we took this and then we added another weight right here, it will not get to it either because of this sequence task. You can kind of think of this branch right here as just a parent branch of this. It's a very similar branch to that. So. As soon as this first child will return failure, which in this case is the sequence task, then it won't get to this wait task. So let's go ahead and hit play. And there we go. We can now add, let's make it a little bit more interesting and add a return success. So now the status code will change. It will, instead of it being failure, it will now return a status of success. So I'd expect this wait task to hit, to be played. So perfect. So what this, what happened here was this wait task returned success. So sequence task played the next task. This wait task then returned success, but because of this return failure decorator, it then returned failure. So this wait task never played. If we go up one level in the hierarchy, this returns this success status change the status of the sequence task to from failure to success, so that's why this wait task then started to play. So the sequence task really can just be thought of as an and. It will keep playing until it returns failure. And that's basically it in terms of how the sequence task works.